Can you share the notes if possible? You should see them now. Do you see the notes? No, we see your um, Win File Explorer. Huh? Oh, I shared the wrong window. That didn't help anything. Okay, stop share. Share screen. Is that better? Yep, definitely. Um, and if you even want, yeah, that's good. Um, so welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, so the first thing to mention before we start, um, tomorrow we will have a stable release. So please don't do not modify the release.ci environments uh, until the stable release um, is over. That's the first thing. Um, the second one, so the first topic that I want to mention here, um, I had a look to the to the cost of the Azure account, and we are above the limits for two months now. So two months ago, we were um, close to 12,000. And this time we are close to 11,000. So we are decreasing again, but we have to identify ways to go um, to go back below 10K. Um, one thing that I noticed is the network, um, the network point risk cost increased from since November to now increased from um, what, $200 to $1,600. So it's a major increase. Um, it's probably because we redirected a lot of traffic uh, for the mirrors on the communities cluster, which is something that we that we fixed last week. So it's still too early to, to identify a trend, but we still need to identify other services where we could reduce the cost um, anyway. So this is something that we have to work on, um, but yeah, no, the Linux Foundation did not complain. And overall, I think um, if we just look at the cost over the past year, we are still below um, our limits, but yeah, it, we, it shouldn't be, um, yeah, we should pay attention to that. Any question? So in, the, in terms of the oh, go ahead, Gareth. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna in terms of the bandwidth cost, is that what's the split compared to sort of egress and egress on that? So we don't have I don't easily have that information because the view that I was looking at is on the Azure accounts, so not inside the communities cluster. So we can definitely have some we can definitely identify trends um, inside the cluster by looking at, at the graph and a dashboard because there we have metrics uh, for the different services. Um, I mean, we have a lot of metrics inside. Um, uh, yeah. no, we, we should be able to tell from the Azure dashboards just at a network level, whether it, the cost is coming from, um, yeah, bandwidth coming in or out. It normally splits. It normally splits the metric into two things. Okay, okay. I didn't see. I didn't find that information. So maybe I should just spend more time there. Thanks for the suggestion. So, and Gareth, the reason to to ask is it inbound or outbound is is that there are different techniques we use then to to reduce those costs, inbound versus outbound, or. Uh, so yeah, I'm wondering whether it's because of we're doing things like increased number of Docker builds. Are we pulling more images from external sources inside? Um, and are we paying for that? So is there some um, caching or relocation of stuff? Or is it down to some configuration in the cluster somewhere, which means that things are being downloaded from it far more frequently? Um, I'm not sure what that would be, but it could have point to somewhere in some some other uh, misconfiguration that we've had in the past. So basically, this could give us some insight about which service we have to to look at. So uh, if it's a mirror, if it's a CI environment, if it's whatever it is. Um, so yeah, do it step by step. First step is uh, separating ingress egress. Then see how you can have it on the graph now. Then next step could be uh, per namespace. That or per pod or per service, the idea, but do it by tiny iterations, just to be sure we don't start something that we don't finish until uh, weeks. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, the, the most important thing is for now, the, the Azure account is paid. Uh, the Linux Foundation did not complain. Um, and so, yeah, we still have to, to improve the current situation anyway. So the next topic, um, so I propose that we discuss it um, immediately. Danielle, um, let's talk about having a new wiki 
in the Jenkins Infra project. Do you want to elaborate a little bit? Okay, Daniel is not available, so I propose that we continue. Sorry, um, sorry. I'm sorry, I was stepping away for a moment because I didn't expect the topic to already be mine. So yeah, um, I just wanted to bring up um, a suggestion. Um, we used to use the wiki for a lot of um, like meeting notes and other collaborative document editing stuff in the past when it worked. Um, and uh, then we had trouble operating the wiki um, and problems with spammers and all of that and um, abandoned that. And since then, we started using Google Docs or as you're sharing right now, HackMD or even GitHub Gists or GitHub Wikis or weirdly some stuff um, in normal GitHub repos that would probably, at least from my point of view, be better off in a wiki for collaborative editing. And so I wanted to bring up the suggestion to have a new wiki that is explicitly not for housing technical documentation, which should be on the site or in plugin repos and such. Um, but, you know, where we would put notes for the infra meeting and notes for the governance meeting and that sort of content. Um, and before, you know, I emailed the dev list suggesting, hey, this is what we should do. I wanted to bring it up to this group, whether this is something we can even support. Okay, um, so to be honest, um, then it would mean that we would have to deploy a new wiki service. And in the past, we had issues to find people who were interested to maintain um, that service. And we just having, and we just end up having uh, a snowflakes. So that's why we started using um, managed service like Google Doc. I'm not a big fan of Google Doc, to be honest, because you need to have a Google account to, to, to use it, which, I mean, not everybody has one. Um, to me, the ACND seems a, a good compromise um, because then once the meeting is over, you publish a note on the Git repository and then the collaboration can happen there. Um, I put a link to a pull request that I opened on the Jenkins Infra slash documentation Git repository where, where we explain the difference between synchronized, asynchronous and asynchronous communication. Um, uh, I'm just sharing ideas. Um, I'm not totally. Un I'm not a totally uh, totally against having a wiki, um, especially if we have a smaller group of people. Um, um, yeah, I, I could I could look at uh, if we can find something easy to put in place and easy to maintain. So, um, pardon my uh, ignorance here. Is there a wiki solution where we can collaborate in real time? Accepted Confluence, I um, don't know. I don't think so. I, I mean, I have. Maybe, I mean, so maybe then. Yeah. Is uh, Confluence something we could get from uh, the Linux Foundation, like they do Jira? So this is definitely an option as well. Uh, Linux Foundation could provide a managed Confluence. Um, and it will be even, and it will be so, and there we have two options. Either we transfer uh, the current Confluence data to that location, like we did for Jira, or uh, we just start from, from scratch. Um, if the plan, if the plan is to use uh, Confluence again, I would just look with them if we can just move the data from the current wiki to to that new. Um, so I, I, yeah, I don't know if the other have any, any opinion about using Confluence again for the meeting notes. So, so Daniel, could you elaborate a little further on on the the challenges? So, you, is your worry that we 
we would be better, or are you thinking we would be better served by having things centralized, um, sort of organized for these, for notes and things like it, even accepting that we're going to limit the number of people we allow to, to have right permission so to these things? If, if I can just answer your question before Daniel, my understanding and my frustration is that we now, since a, since a while, you rely a lot on Google Documents, and that's really difficult to find all the information because each time we have a contributor submit, we have meeting notes, we have whatever, we rely on, on Google Doc, and yeah, that's just awful. I mean, that's... I'm not a and I'm not a big fan of Google Doc, and that's why I started using Acme because then I can push the notes in GitHub. Um, but I totally understand that Acme is not convenient for everybody, so I'm not totally against having a wiki in place. Uh, again, I'm just more concerned about maintaining it. Uh, so if the Linux Foundation is open to to maintain it, uh, I don't have strong objection. So yeah, it's it's similar for me. So. For one thing, it's the practical uh, problems um, of having a sprawling mess of individual documents that are created and abandoned. Um, like I've seen at companies that use, do something similar, where searching and finding tends to be a mess and you don't never update anything that was created in the past. and. You just create a new document and then you wonder a year later which is the one with the truth and um, obviously wikis can also become a mess um, but uh, it seems that we've handled that fairly okay in the past um, and then there is also you know a, a principle behind it that i don't think uh, as the jenkins project uh, we should um, rely heavily on third parties, uh, free services, um, that we just, you know, happen to use without some kind of sponsorship, um, because those services can go away or they can change in a manner that is not great for us. And then we have trouble even getting our data out of them again. I don't feel strongly about the technology that we should be using, but um, if I understood Olivier correctly, uh, Confluence is uh, basically the one uh, that allows collaborative uh, editing, especially real-time editing, and that would be uh, very useful to have. Obviously, Confluence has a few anti-patterns like page comments, which I've never seen as useful anywhere. Um, and uh, whenever I looked at its API in the past, I couldn't figure out how to automatically manage groups uh, to derive permissions from, um, which is something I always wanted to do, but the API didn't, didn't allow it. Um, because we know uh, we have a complete list of uh, plugin maintainer user accounts, for example, if we were to back it with LDAP. Um, and then we just do a second list with people who aren't plugin maintainers, but still involved in the community. And suddenly we won't have spam uh, if we limit editing to these folks. Um, so I think if, if we can get something like that done, uh, which I would be happy to look into, uh, that would be good. Um, so yeah, just, just some random thoughts. Uh, I think we should have a wiki. Uh, for our collaborative editing needs. Um, and it should be something that we quote unquote own in the sense that um, we uh, have some amount of control over the data in it rather than some other uh, hosted service. I mean, do you have any opinion, Damien or Garrett on this? I think that's that's a discussion that should happen on, on the mailing list to, to have more feedback. Um, on, on my side, I despise Confluence for me. I waste my time and it, this will be for me uh, something slowing me down to take notes, quite honestly. I, I can't, I've lost so much time trying to just save or trying to understand how to use it basically. So maybe it's just that I'm dumb. Um, Last year, we used a self-hosted instance of Etherpad, which has the advantage of uh, filling the boxes that you just, uh, just listed. 
we are we master our own data it's stored on a file system so we just have to back up uh, with the targz it's a quite easy service it provides real time the only thing is what i like on akmd and that could be something to search also as a box is the ability to support markdown or ascii doctor syntaxes since we use both syntaxes or on all the technical docs so the ability to export to these syntaxes and reuse them it could be great as well, but this is nice to have and not must have. Yeah, I see how nice it is in the second line of this document where it switched to, I think, LaTeX formula mode. Okay. Um, um, yep. But yeah, Etherpad was a nice one, I'm adding it. You can host it yourself so that that could be an intermediate. <laughs> So yeah, it, so, it sounds like the next step is to send an email on the mailing list, collect IDs, and yeah. This is something that I can do tomorrow. Or maybe Daniel, if you want to send that email. Uh, I think you're better versed in terms of the actual hosting options we have, um, but okay. uh, I fine with me. Okay, um, so I can, I can work on that. Um, so while we are talking about, yep, sorry, Mark, you have last. Sorry, I have I've I forgot that we've got a single account that we're using, and there's a webinar starting in five minutes on on this account. We have to hard stop. Okay, sorry. Um, I am happy to reconvene us on my Zoom account if everybody would be willing to just let me send you a message with my Zoom account so we can continue. No, I just propose to consult because we only have seven minutes left. Um, so I just so. I propose that if we have a specific topic that we want to talk, um, we'll talk in the in RC. Otherwise, we just keep the topic for next week. Any opinion with that? OK. Daniel, is it fine for you? Yep. Then let's stop here. And uh, yeah. Thanks very Later. much. Sorry, I should have, should have realized that, should have thought about that, and did not. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, that's, a, that's OK. See you later. Bye-bye.